Imagine the raw power of a mile-long freight train, a steel behemoth weighing thousands of tons, hurtling across a seemingly delicate bridge. We are talking about railway bridges, a spectacle of engineering, a testament to human ingenuity. But how does this seemingly fragile structure withstand such immense force day after day, year after year? This isn't just about steel and concrete. It's a symphony of physics, material science, and design techniques. Let's see how the railway bridges carry heavy loads in this video. Hello everyone, I'm Jugdish and welcome to Civil Artifacts. To understand this feat, we must first speak the language of forces. First, we have weight, the product of mass and gravity. In the case of a fully loaded train, this is a colossal downward force. But it's not just about the weight, it's about how that force is distributed. When the train's wheels press down on the rails, they create stress, the internal resistance of the bridge material to deformation. Imagine squeezing a rubber ball. The pressure you apply is stress. Strain, on the other hand, is the actual deformation, the change in shape or size of the material. There are three primary types of stress, tension, a pulling force, compression, a pushing force, and shear, a force that causes layers to slide past each other. This understanding of stress and strain is the foundation upon which engineers build their designs. However, managing this force efficiently requires a sophisticated system of load distribution, the key to a bridge's strength lies in its ability to distribute the load effectively. This process begins with the train's wheels, which transfer the weight to the rails. The rails, in turn, distribute the load to the sleepers, those horizontal supports that run perpendicular to the rails. The sleepers then pass the load to the ballast, the layer of crushed rock that forms the bridge's foundation. The ballast acts as a shock absorber, distributing the load over a wider area and preventing the ground beneath from settling unevenly. We also need to consider four critical types of load. Dead load, the weight of the bridge itself, live load, the weight of the train and any other traffic, wind load and also the earthquake load in seismically active zone. An important note here is that generally only one of wind load and earthquake load is considered while designing the structure. Both of them are not considered together most of the time while designing any structure. These loads vary bridge to bridge, and their purposes, for example, look at this iconic Chenab Bridge in Jammu and Kashmir of India. It's the world's highest railway arch bridge with the height of 1,178 feet, even higher than the Eiffel Tower. The total length of the bridge is 1,315 meters. About 28,660 tons of steel is used in its construction. The bridge's deck segments weigh about 85 tons each. All components like these contributes in the dead load on the bridge. The design allows for trains to travel at speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour. The bridge is designed to withstand wind speeds of up to 266 kilometers per hour. And as the Chenab Bridge is located in a seismically active zone, it is designed to withstand earthquakes of magnitude 8 on the Richter scale. Engineers meticulously calculate all these loads to ensure the bridge can handle the combined forces when the bridge is to be constructed on a water body with unavoidable underwater construction, things become even more complex to handle. But how do we translate this understanding of forces and load distribution into actual bridge designs? Let's explore the diverse world of bridge architecture. Now let's explore the diverse world of bridge designs, each tailored to specific spans and site conditions. First, we have the simple beam bridge, ideal for short spans. Its strength lies in its ability to resist bending. However, its limitations become apparent as spans increase. To overcome this, engineers develop the truss bridge, a network of interconnected triangles, excelling at distributing loads efficiently. Each member of the truss is subjected to either tension or compression, creating a strong and lightweight structure. For spanning valleys and gorges, the arch bridge, a marvel of compression, transfers the load outwards to the abutments. For the longest spans, we have the suspension bridge, a symphony of cables and towers. The cables draped between the towers carry the weight of the deck, transferring it to the anchorages. And finally, the cable stayed bridge, with its elegant network of cables radiating from the towers, providing direct support to the deck. 
If you want me to cover any particular type of bridge, let me know in the comments section. Each design has its own unique strengths, allowing engineers to tailor bridges to specific environments and load requirements. But these designs are only as good as the materials they're built with. The materials used in bridge construction are just as crucial as the design. Steel, with its high tensile strength and ductility, is a workhorse in bridge engineering. It can withstand immense pulling forces and deform without fracturing. Reinforced concrete, a composite of concrete and steel reinforcement, provides the compressive strength of concrete with the tensile strength of steel. If you are interested in concrete and steel, you can check out these short explanation videos on my channel about RCC and steel sections. Back to the topic, this combination of concrete and steel is ideal for piers, foundations, and decks. However, materials can degrade over time. Corrosion, caused by exposure to moisture and chemicals, is a constant threat. To combat this, engineers employ various protection techniques, such as coatings, cathodic protection, and the use of corrosion-resistant alloys. With the right materials and the right designs, we must then ensure the bridges are built to last and remain safe throughout their lifespan. Before a bridge is even built, engineers conduct rigorous analyses to ensure its structural integrity. Safety is paramount in bridge engineering. Engineers incorporate a factor of safety, a buffer zone, to account for uncertainties and potential failures. Regular inspections and maintenance are crucial for detecting and addressing any signs of damage. Modern bridges are often equipped with sensor networks that monitor their health in real time, providing early warnings of potential problems. These modern techniques build on the legacy of bridge building, which is filled with examples of innovation and triumph. Railway bridge engineering is a story of continuous innovation, spanning centuries. From the Victorian marvel of the fourth bridge, a testament to the power of steel, to the modern elegance of the Milo Viaduct, these structures stand as symbols of human ingenuity. Each bridge tells a story of overcoming challenges, pushing the boundaries of what's possible. The challenges faced by engineers in the past and how they overcame them have paved the way for modern bridge design and construction. And now engineers are facing new challenges and pushing the boundaries of what is possible once again. Today, bridge engineers face new challenges such as the need to build more sustainable and resilient structures. We're seeing the development of new materials, such as high-performance concrete and advanced composites that offer improved strength and durability. We're also exploring innovative designs, such as self-healing bridges and modular construction techniques that can reduce maintenance costs and extend the lifespan of bridges. The future of railway bridge engineering is bright with ongoing research and development paving the way for even more remarkable structures. Railway bridges are more than just structures. They're lifelines that connect communities and drive economies. They're a testament to human ingenuity and a reminder of the power of engineering to shape our world. We hope you've enjoyed this journey into the unseen strength of railway bridges. If you found this video helpful, click that like button and subscribe for more such content. See you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.